Good morning. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. In it, Paul writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Rejoice! Celebrate. Again, Paul says, rejoice. Those feel like such strange words for this time. I can't say celebration is exactly how I'm feeling right now. Of course, as soon as I say that out loud, I have to remember the times in which Paul himself was writing them. You see, Paul wrote the words of this letter, this letter we've come to call the epistle of joy, while he was sitting in a Roman prison cell. And Roman prison cells were not like today's prisons. Roman prison cells, for starters, were not indefinite holding cells. You waited there only as long as it took for your fate to be decided. Paul, it is clear from this letter, knows that his fate may be death by Roman execution, and that could be a particularly cruel and public end to your life. In the meantime, you may or may not be provided food or depend on your friends to care for you. You might have a window, or you might be dropped into a dungeon or merely a deep hole in the ground. We don't really know what Paul's prison was like, except to say it was a fearsome place to be. And Paul was sitting in that prison because he'd been arrested for preaching about Jesus. We Americans often take for granted anymore we're free to exercise our religion without harassment from our government. You can argue about whether or not we have all the freedoms we want associated with that, but the freedoms we have are something Paul knew nothing of. He had been preaching the resurrection and the lordship of Jesus Christ. It was a crime to call anybody Lord but Caesar himself, and it was a crime punishable by death. Paul was in prison several times, and he is sitting in a dark hole right now, waiting to learn whether he will live or die, dependent on the kindness of his friends for food. Friends who, by association with him, are likely to be under close scrutiny to be held to a similar fate. Christians across the kingdom are being persecuted and hunted down. Everything about Paul's external circumstances gave him reason for fear and anxiety. But Paul writes, rejoice, celebrate, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. We hear those words in our time, and again, we think to ourselves, how can we rejoice right now? Fourteen weeks ago, a novel coronavirus was becoming news in our country. We shut down businesses and started saying, staying home to save lives. So far, over 2 million people have been diagnosed with COVID-19, and over 215,000 have died from it in this nation. 1,000 of those deaths have happened right here in Oakland County. The social and economic costs of the pandemic have been completely unprecedented. They've left everyone in varying levels of crisis and fear. Further, the disease has revealed and exacerbated social inequities throughout our society, has exposed an economic structure in which many of our most essential workers are the poorest paid among us, where people of color are at greater risk from holding these jobs, chronically lacking good health care, and in Paul's words from Romans 12, we've not treated the parts of the body that seem weakest and least important as actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable, we should have been clothing with greatest care. Our essential workers are paying the price of that inequity right now. All of this has been joined by the public murder of an unarmed black man named George Floyd by a group of police officers who were supposed to be investigating a report of a counterfeit bill. His death, added to others like it, has set off national protests and calls for reform in every state in the union. 
People are crying out for reform and justice all around us and seeking meaningful change. All this while we can't visit our family in the hospital, share meals or worship or hug the ones we love or even bury our dead without risking spreading the deadly virus. And what does Paul say to us? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. He says to let nothing steal your joy in God, not imprisonment or fear or grief or loneliness or the threat of death, for the Lord is near. Which is not to deny or minimize the very real struggles that we're all facing individually, corporately, as a nation and world, but it is a call to see the truth that God is with us. God, who is the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all that is, is with us, has sent us, has already begun redeeming the world. And we who are his son's followers are part of that redeeming work. He wants us to remember that when things seem darkest, that is when we're most needed. It is often the time that God does God's best work. Paul is inviting us to change our focus and to remember what we're here for. And from Paul's point of view, we are not here to live a life of quiet safety and comfort. We are here to share God's love with the world, and there is no better time to do that than in a time when people need God's love the most. It can be so easy for us to turn inside and focus on our personal struggles and challenges or the big news of the day, the messages from the media that highlight the next and the biggest disaster and problem and indiscretion or blind spots of our leaders. And when you're focusing on those things, it often feels like our world is gripped in whatever is untrue, dishonorable, unjust, impure, displeasing, and inexcusable. And we get sucked into the fear and the hate that grows from it. Because you become whatever it is that you give your energy to. Which is not to say that you should stop paying attention to the news, not at all. It's important to be informed about the world and what's happening out there. But it's also important not to let that information be what forms your attitude about the world. Because this is God's good creation. And there is much good and beautiful to celebrate in it. And there are many places that we can bring that goodness to bear on the broken places if we allow God to guide our path. Remember, Jesus called us the light of the world, a city on a hill. We are a place of sanctuary for the downtrodden. Even when the building is closed, the people continue that work. We are still called today to proclaim the lordship and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the world and to bring that news to bear for every person God places in our path, maybe even a few that we seek out on purpose too. So Paul says, rejoice, the Lord is near. And he gives specific instructions on how we should do that. He says, do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. He tells us not to give our energy to worry and anxiety, to trouble ourselves over things we can't change, but rather we should give our prayers to God in prayer and focus on giving thanks for the things that we can we should fix our minds on the good blessings of creation and life with God and pay attention to the things that are a true representation of God's good and beautiful world, rather than feeding your mind on the places that people have made ugly. Celebrate the goodness of the world. And when we focus there, the peace of God will enter your heart and your mind and watch over you. But from there, from there, then, you can use your energy each day to focus on doing what is good and true and holy. From there, you can be the goodness. Fill your mind with making those places beautiful, bringing God's beauty and joy with you. Focus on doing and being whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable bringing joy to the places people have made ugly with racism and equity and inequity, bringing joy to places where people are sick and dying or isolated and lonely, where there's financial hardship, personal loss, physical and mental anguish, wherever God has placed you in this world, what has God given you? 
where you can bring a little light, a little love, a little gentleness and goodness. Bring the joy of the Lord to those places and how you live and move and have your being. Keep on doing these things, he says, and the peace of God will be with you. People of God, our joy does not come from the circumstances of our lives or what we see in the world out there. Our joy comes from knowing God in Christ and setting our eyes on him, knowing him and bringing his love and grace to every dark corner this world has until all of earth and every last person on it is filled with the joy of the Lord and the peace that comes from life in God's grace. May you go this week with the example of Paul before you, eyes fixed on Jesus, heart ready to love, and to keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in the saints of God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.